Hey everyone, this is Gary from SNG, and uh, we have a video here today. Uh, we're going to be repairing a Champion Power Equipment uh, portable generator. It is a 7,000 watt running and 9,000 watt surge, and uh, it's got some pretty cool features on it, but uh, we're going to discuss today uh, what is going on with it. Uh, the gas engine side is running just fine. Uh, the electrical side does need work. Uh, the battery was installed backwards, uh, which uh, connects to all the boards inside the control panel, and unfortunately it shorted it all out. Thankfully there is nothing wrong with the generator head. I was able to put 12 volts to the brushes, and I was able to get 125 volts out on the 240 volt leg, which makes sense because the uh, AVR in the end bell uh, outputs DC voltage of about 24 volts uh to the rotor field when it's running to get 240 volts so in addition to being the remote control module um, it also does all the other engine management features besides uh, uh the remote uh, capability with the uh, uh fob there uh, all these wires that you see here uh is controlled by this board it controls the stepper motor which is connected to the choke lever when you're doing an, a remote start it also controls uh, the ignition wire which i'm um, assuming is this yep that is it so this goes to inside the engine bell this is actually to the ignition coil inside uh, and these are all uh, color coded here so what I did was I put tape on each side of them uh, so I wouldn't uh, connect them in the wrong way but uh, essentially what you can see here there's the starter motor relay and these this is the relay wires one's the positive one's the negative which engages the starter motor that runs back up to the control board uh, you also have your ignition here, which grounds out the ignition when you want to shut it down. Uh, you have a fuel uh, cutoff solenoid, which is on the bottom of the carburetors to prevent fuel from uh, dumping into the engine. Um, so that's a good, you don't see that on a lot of smaller generators like this, but this is a nice feature. It just energizes it with 12 volts and it opens up the carburetor. And uh, over here is the uh, connector to the stepper motor, which is located on, uh, on the choke lever, as I mentioned. Um, this will move it around accordingly and uh, will go to run, go to choke. Uh, it'll move it automatically when you're using the fob. And uh, over here on the bottom, if you can see it, this is going into behind the flywheel. This is actually where the stator is located. This particular generator does charge the starter battery when the engine is running. And this will run over to um, this board right here, which is the uh, battery charger um, board, control board. This will make sure that whatever voltage is coming in from the stator will go to the starter battery and regulate it at, at the voltage to keep it charged. And then finally on the bottom here is a yellow wire, which kind of goes inside the engine block here. That's for the low oil sensor. Now the low oil sensor is a little bit of a pain to get to, but essentially if that doesn't have sense pressure inside the crankcase when it's running, it'll tell this board to ground out the ignition and shut down your engine so you don't damage it. And finally, uh, this is the uh, automatic voltage regulator. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's got uh, DC 12 volt positive and then negative is the white going over to the brush assembly. And then you have uh, two, uh, you have uh, four wires here. So the two blue wires is your displaced excitation winding. It'll get input from there. And then the two yellow wires is actually a sensing winding, uh, which is off the main winding. It's receiving not a full 120 volts, but a portion of it. Uh, it's used as a comparative circuit to uh, adjust your output voltage. Now, it's your typical six wire. Now, this one uh, is a little unique to Champion's generators. This is a, a signal wire, a 12 volt signal wire that runs back to the remote control module. One of the features of the remote start is that uh, when you first start it, it actually has a 15 second delay which allows the engine to warm up and stabilize and then the remote control module will then activate the AVR to out start outputting voltage. So for the first 15 seconds you start it up with the remote, this will not output power. Now that is, uh, it's different if you try to pull it with the recoil or start it with the uh, switch on the front there, you should get power out immediately. Uh, to adjust this, you have uh, your little uh, potentiometer right here. You're probably going to need a very small uh, eyeglass uh, flathead screwdriver to adjust it. But um, that's pretty much it. So what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall all these boards, brand new, and uh, give it a, give it a uh, fire it up and see if uh, it makes power. 
and then what we'll have to do is uh, check the speed of the generator to make sure it's at uh, 62.5 hertz or 63 is the top as you was as fast as you want it to go without a load and then adjust here as necessary to get about 245 volts AC on the uh, 240 volt leg. Okay, so I just finished reinstalling all the boards and uh, just wanted to make a minor note here on the con remote control module. Uh, be sure to check that your fuse is good. Uh, this is a 10 amp rated fuse, it's a barrel type. And uh, if you come across a loose wire here, a white wire to be specific on the um, on the 10 pin connector, this is fine, this is expected. This is actually the antenna that uh, receives the signal from the key fob here. Uh, there was ex a little bit of a exposed uh, bare copper wire on the end, so there's really not much that can ground out in here. It's mostly plastic and then you have the metal frame, but you know, I'm not gonna let Murphy's Law get at me with this particular project, so I just covered it up with some electrical tape. Uh, so we're gonna put this cover back on and then uh, see if it fires up. Um, once I know that everything's working properly, uh, over here is your pilot lamp and your uh, program button. Now this program button, since we replaced the remote control module, it is going to have to get repaired with um, the existing key fob so that it'll uh, sense the signal when you want to do the remote start option. I'll show that to you guys in the next segment. Okay, so everything is back together and the new battery is installed. Uh, another thing to mention is that the original battery did short out internally. It only had about 7 volts, uh, so a new battery had to be purchased as well. Uh, so we need to now pair this key fob with the new remote control module. So what you want to do is you want to set the power of the battery on and then set this to the middle position, which is basically on. You don't want to start it. Over here is your uh, program button, so you want to press and hold for three seconds until the pilot lamp comes on. Okay, now you're going to see the red light come on. What you want to do is press the stop button once. It's going to blink once. Then you press the start button once. It's going to blink once as well. Then you press the program button three, uh, for three seconds until the pilot lamp is off. And that's all there is to it. You shut it down, and now the key fob is paired back to the new remote module. All right, so we got it running, and uh, it seems to be uh, running very well. Uh, the voltage was a little high. I don't know if you can see it, but it's running at 248 volts on the output, which is good. Uh, right now we're at 61.63 hertz, so we want to increase that just a little bit. Um, I've already adjusted it on the voltage regulator. So now to adjust the speed is over here. So we want to adjust it to 62. So just buttoning up the uh, end bell here, uh, just putting uh, some zip ties around all the wires here and then mounted the AVR with these two bolts. Now finally just got to put the end cap on here. Uh, make sure that your hot and the neutral and the ground are all uh, nice and tight coming off the stator and uh, let's fire it up back up. Okay, the last feature I want to check here is the remote start and what you want to do is set the power uh, to on and the engine start switch to on and what will happen is uh, there's going to be a 15 second delay uh, for power output and I want to show how the stepper motor will operate uh, right now you'll see this arm move and then I'll move over to the other side as you see the output will likely be only about 6 volts and then it will about 10 seconds later 15 seconds later you'll see the output voltage turn on so we're going to press and hold the start button Right now it's only 3 volts, count to about 10 seconds. You should see 125 volts once the remote control board has given it time for it to stabilize. And there you go. And normally the pilot light would be blinking during the delay. 
and we got ourselves the output here of 248 volts, 62.7 hertz. There's only three hours on this machine. Well, finally the remote to shut it down. And looks like everything is uh, back to working the way it should. Okay, so I have all the boards out of the generator here, and I also have the wiring diagram. Just wanted to show everyone what these boards are, um, where they are on the schematic. So let's going to start with the biggest one right here, which is the remote control module. Uh, that's located right here. This controls the stepper motor, this controls all the solenoids, your spark plug ignition ground out, your charging coil for uh, the battery on board, uh, starter relay, oil, low oil sensor, and then the fuel uh, solenoid cutoff. So this is the basically the main brain board. Over here is the uh, battery charge regulator. It just makes sure that you're getting the right output voltage from the stator windings uh, charging the battery on board. This is the over voltage protector. This is uh, connected again to this brain board. It's sensing uh, from here uh, on, 100, on the 120 volt side to make sure that the voltage is not too high. Uh, if it were to go too high, it'll send a message back to this board, basically uh, shutting down the engine until the uh, over voltage is uh, corrected. Over here is the uh, rectifier assembly. Uh, this is just converting AC uh, voltage from the uh, main windings over to DC, uh, likely to uh, power uh, extra voltage uh, sensing components within this uh, control module. And then finally, the remote, uh, this is the uh, automatic voltage regulator. It's an eight wire, unique to champion generators. This board actually talks to this board via this wire here. Uh, when you use the remote key fob, this will actually delay this board from turning on for about 15 seconds to allow the engine to stabilize. And then once it's uh, reached that time uh, limit, this will then output 12 volts to this connector here, telling this board to turn on so that you can get your uh, uh, generator output. And that would be um, located on the main, uh, that's your uh, automatic voltage regulator there. 